ever heard? How would you cut spending and attempt to balance the budget? Thank you for the question. I think that if you look at the big issues that we're going to be facing uh, in the next Congress, there is no question that spending and debt is the number one issue. That is what I hear, and I know that all of us here on this stage here, as we go around the 5th District, we hear about concern about the unrestrained spending in Washington, $1.2 trillion in deficits, it's unimaginable debt uh, that we're accumulating. This is money that we don't have, that we're spending, and we are borrowing money we can't pay back. And it is going to, not only does it threaten the existence of this country in terms of future generations and our children who are going to have to pay this debt, uh, but it, it, it threatens business and our competitiveness across the globe. I believe that we have, the first thing we have to do to control spending is we have to adopt a balanced budget amendment. That is critical. In Virginia, where I serve in the state legislature, we have a balanced budget requirement in our Constitution. There's no reason that the federal government shouldn't have the same exact requirement. Another thing that I think that would, would, would help us cut spending, uh, reduce spending in, in, in Washington, would be what we have in Virginia, the single object rule. That is a part of our Constitution uh, that only allows a bill to have a single object. So you can't log roll, you can't exchange swap earmarks on every single piece of legislation that comes through uh, Washington in order to get it passed. We have to have that fiscal discipline. I'm in favor of looking at uh, depart whole departments, uh, whole agencies uh, for elimination and for reduction. Uh, the, federal, the Federal Education Department is a perfect example of the government taking money from our pockets, we send it to Washington, and they take their cut and they send it back. We need to eliminate that kind of thinking, but everything should be on the table because we've got to balance our budget. We've got to reduce spending, reduce taxes, and that's how we're going to make this country strong again. It's not going to be by spending $1.2 trillion in deficits and $13 trillion in debt. Thank you. Number six, Mr. McKelvey. What are the standards, both professional and philosophical, that you require of a nominee to the Supreme Court? Uh, first, I want to apologize to Joe Thomas for not thanking him for being here. <laughs> hey, Joe, don't hold that against me next interview, okay? Thanks. What's your name again? <laughs> Sam You're going to love you. Uh, when it comes to the Supreme Court, uh, real simple for me, I do not want a judge that legislates from the bench. I want a judge who understands, comprehends, and will follow the Constitution to the letter. Number seven, Mr. McPadden. What is the best strategy to, de to defeat Congressman Cariello? Excellent question. Uh, you know, I could meet Jim. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the things that, that, that I'm most proud about our uh, campaign is that we have run a positive, issues-oriented campaign the entire time. I plan on doing that to Tom Perriello also. I don't have to go negative on Tom Perriello because Tom Perriello has already gone negative on himself. He has failed to represent the people of the Fifth District. I just need to show the record. I just need to show his vote on cap and trade. I just need to explain how his vote for health care is going exactly against the opposite things that he ran on two years ago, being a blue dog, that's fiscally conservative Democrat, and a pro-life candidate. He's neither. And all I have to do is expose his record. And I think we'll have quite a sizable uh, margin uh, in come November. So I just that's, that would be my plan to beat Tom Perriello. Thank you. All right, now we have completed our second round.